Well, hello there, Tankers of the Blitz universe. I'm Flossie, and today I will be reviewing the Object 752. Now, in my opinion, this tank could have been a Tier 10 with how strong it is. It is probably the best heavy tank in Tier 9, at least in my opinion. It has so many things going for it, and uh, more on that in a little bit. But first, let's break into the tank's stats. So it does carry a two-shell auto-loading gun, which deals 430 damage on the standard. So times that by two, and you get 860. So um, you're going to be doing a lot of damage if you do pen both of your shells. Its uh, heat damage is 370 and 530 with its high explosive. So also pretty great if you're able to shoot HE at people. Its penetration is really nice. It has 257 millimeters of standard, 374 millimeters of heat pen, which is, again, tier 10 levels of heat pen. Like, you are not going to struggle to pen anything in this tank. And it's one of the main, like, super strong uh, things about it. And it has 75 millimeters of high explosive pen, which is pretty good as well. Um, as for its gun, its, its accuracy, it's okay. Now, it's a Russian gun, so alongside it being an autoloader and Russian gun, it means you're not going to hit, like, crazy amount of your shells. It's kind of inaccurate. It has an aiming time of 4.5 seconds and a dispersion of 0.362. So, again, like, kind of inaccurate. Now, this tank also does have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is quite solid, and it means you can work most ridge lines. As for the tank's mobility, it goes 38 forward, which is quite nice. However, it does go 12 in reverse, and 12 reverse speed, as we know, at least if you've seen my E5 video last, like the last video I posted on the E5, is awful. 12 reverse is absolutely horrible. And its power to weight of 14.9 isn't the best either, but you will be able to get up to your top speed fairly quickly, I guess. And um, its intraclip is also like, I believe it's a four second intraclip, so that's, uh, it's a little bit strange at how it plays. And um, you'll see that in a bit. It's it's really, really weird. Like, it's not like a two-shot yo where you can dump both of your shells in a matter of, like, two seconds. You really have to be careful with how much you're peeking in this tank to get both of your shells out. Now, the tank's armor is really strong and not so strong at the same time. Uh, basically, it's troll. This tank has a troll armor profile. So, in terms of its turret armor, the uh, main weak spot is the roof of the turret and the hatches which if you load premium ammo, those are going to be the easiest spots to hit. However, if you do load premium, if you have enough pen at least, you can just pen straight through the entire turret like anywhere. However, since, a, since the turret design is very strange, there are spots that are just completely red. And it's like a 57 heavy turret where there are like little slits that sometimes your shells will just bounce off of. So even if you do think you can fully pen this tank's turret, uh, still sometimes it will troll you. And um, again, the whole armor profile of this tank is just troll. So especially the midsection is like the main weak spot of this tank uh, in general. Like it doesn't really have a lower plate. And I mean, I guess you could call it a lower plate, but it's tiny. But, I mean, half of the upper plate you can pen as well. So, um, even that is troll as well at certain angles. Like, it's just really weird. And same with the side armor. The side armor is extremely troll. Basically, think of an IS-7 when it comes to its side armor. Like, even if you're shooting at this thing flat on, like, in the open, your shells can still sometimes bounce depending on where you shoot at. And, uh, it's... It means that this tank is really good at side scraping. So, um, if you can, I would get this tank into a side scraping position and uh, use its great troll side armor to your advantage. Now, up against us, we have a 907 who is trying to peek that spotting position. And uh, my shell does miss him, but it's okay. So, I'm going to reload the whole clip. And uh, it seems like our whole team decided to go town, which was kind of unfortunate for us. And especially unfortunate for this E100 who is now by himself over there. I am kind of going to, uh, I'm going to play extremely passive here, and that's because I don't want to be the one getting rushed. I don't know where that shell went, that's really sad, but uh, I should be able to get one into the 100 Luckily, he actually high rolls that guy for 696, so he does kill him. But uh, again, their whole team is up here, and my team is kind of on the other side of the map, so I'm going to get this clip into the 183, or at least one shell. I believe I have time for one shell, and then... Um, 
actually, I think I should be able to get both in. Okay, so I get both in, and uh, he is not able to pen me, which is great. So I'm just going to reposition myself over towards this IS-7. I don't really feel like dealing with this uh, 183 right now. And uh, I wonder if this IS-7 is going to bounce us. No, it's not. But that's okay, because we can out-trade tier 10s, like you see here. Oh, unfortunately, their E75 is now HP sharing for the IS-7. So uh, the IS-7 doesn't take both of the shells. But you can literally out-trade tier 10s with this tank if you are able to pen both of your shells. In that sense, it's kind of like a two-shot yo. But uh, again, this thing plays a lot differently from a two-shot yo. You can't just dump both your shells and instantly back up. Since you have about a four-second inch clip, you do have to uh, you have to take your time when you're when you're firing at people, and that basically means that the enemy tanks are going to have more time to shoot back at you. So uh, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit unfortunate when that happens. And right now, I don't really have anything to shoot at, so I'm just going to reload my clip. Luckily, the clip reload on this tank isn't too long, so you're not going to be sitting there, like, twiddling your thumbs for, like, 30 seconds at least. So, that's a good thing about this tank. But, so let's see if we can get a clear shot into the 75 and you can see that nice heat pen. I just loaded that, so I can guarantee the pen. And uh, just like that, only the 907 is left, and we've just done under 3k, which is, I guess, pretty average for this tank. This tank deals a lot, like, you can get out damage quite quickly in this tank with its uh, nice clip, and it's, like, 2500 BPM for a, this type of tank that's really nice. But a pretty easy win for our first game. Yeah, so we get top on the team, a pretty solid game, and, uh, I mean, we were at least able to showcase the gun. I didn't really bounce any shells that game. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's see if Wargaming will load us into a battle quickly, or if it'll take, like, 10 hours. Alright, game number two. We're on Port Bay, which is a pretty good map for our tank. And up against us, we do have a lot of Tier 8s, which is also really nice. This tank is just a Tier 8 menace. Like, it, you just destroy any Tier 8s that you're up against. And it's even harder for them to pen you back, so that makes it pretty funny. To uh, Basically, you can just sit at and stare at them, and they won't be able to pen you unless you're showing your all. Um, because the turret against Tier 8s is quite strong. But anyways, we're going to make our way over towards the left side of the map, which is Seaside. And hopefully our T-92 actually crosses this. Oh boy, it looks like he's becoming a tank destroyer, though. And he's just going to camp there, isn't he? Oh, oh, is he making his way across? It looks like he is, which is good for us. Now, nothing is really spotted, so I'm kind of concerned that they just didn't go this way. Which is unfortunate for us. Bro, can this comp panzer really get off my sight? Thank you. Anyways, in that case, since their team is not here, I am actually going to turn right around and make my way up towards this balcony here. I like this spot uh, simply because I can see when their tanks are rotating around, and I can also see partially into the base cap if they do decide to just sit in base cap and just do nothing. I can uh, get some shells into them that way as well. So here we see the T-69 right down below, and I get a very sad bounce into his tank. But I do get a really nice HE for 552 into his rear. Now, we are stuck in between a Project KPZ, which is the test tank that's out right now. One of, one of six test tanks that are out right now. And the Charlemagne, so I'm going to go for the Tier 8 because he's just straight up weaker. And I don't really think he can do a whole lot about me. So uh, I'm just going to angle and show my side armor because this thing has such good spaced armor. Um, he's not going to be able to use his hash against us. So I'm honestly just going to keep showing him my side. I'm going to over angle it a little bit. Uh, and he's just going to keep doing like HE splash damage, which is literally nothing. So uh, this guy is poking the ridge though. And uh, right now he's the main problem because he can actually pen me quite reliably. I do get a very unfortunate low roll into his tank uh, the T-69 at least, which really sucks because uh, I could have cleared him if that just average rolled. Like, really? Rolling under 400 in this tank is just sad. But now we're in a really good position, and uh, right now this guy's turret is actually really strong. But uh, what I'm going to do is just hold off this Charlemagne, and I'm actually going to shoot at the Wa, the uh, RHM, sorry, if I can get shots into him. We get one HE shell right into his tank, and... I'm actually going to 
not be able to hit the second one into him, which is unfortunate. But using the terrain to our advantage, we're able to get our gun down and shoot the Char for another nice roll. Now this Char seems to be kind of angry with us, so he's going to push up on us, and I'm just going to show him my side armor again so he can't really pen us with HE. And that one bounces. Whoa, that's not fun. But uh, instead of shooting at him again, I'm going to shoot at the RHM and get him out of the game. And just like that, there's only him and the other guy left, who is actually fairly healthy. So I could actually die here if I'm not careful. And uh, good thing I didn't push that Char, because uh, that would have not been good. I would have died to that Conf Panzer over there. So, uh, yeah. Right now, all I'm trying to do is getting... I want to get this guy out of the game right now. And uh, I'm just going to load an HE shell and pen his... Or not pen, but splash his side. And he's dead. All that's left is the project over here. And... Um, I honestly don't really care if he kills me. I'm also just going to hold my one shell because uh, I kind of just want to get one more out. Unfortunately, I bounced the shell due to my crappy aim. But oh well, hopefully this team can actually win this game. Are you going to pen him? Nice. Good job, KPZ. Alright, well, that was game number two. And um, pretty solid game, I guess. I mean, sort of my gun trolled me a little bit more there than I would have liked. Uh did like low roll a couple of shells that would have been pretty helpful to not low roll but overall you can see we did almost 3700 damage in this tank and that is top on the team now if this tank does come out for gold i do recommend you pick this up but um overall again i think this is a an absolute monster of a tank anyways if you haven't already, I would recommend you subscribe to the channel if you've made it this far into the video. You obviously like my content, and uh, it's a good way of supporting the channel as well as making sure you're notified when I upload almost daily. Anyways, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.